At 5.34 p.m. on August the 24th, 1943, in Muncie, Indiana, Rosa Mae Weed gave birth to William Edwin. He was 6 pounds 9 ounces. Bill arrived only five days before Jim's birthday, and the two would be quite a pair. Jim would be almost a surrogate father to all his siblings, nurturing and positive, and Bill would be devoted to Jim. An American family of the 1940s followed predictable stereotypes. The father's work put food on the table and the mother took care of the children. Rosa May had traveled as a gospel musician with her mother and she just couldn't sit at home. She helped with the radio program and a family from the church helped take care of Jim and Bill. Bill was named after Roy's uncle, a man with long arms and powerful fists. He was wanted for manslaughter after killing a man in a barroom brawl in Minnesota. He hid out at the J.K. Weed store, and Roy grew up with him. But the two Bills could not have been more different. Old North Dakota Bill was brawn. Little Muncie Bill was brain. The birth of Jim and Bill may have filled a void for Rosa May. Her first letters from Ohio had revealed a deep loneliness. Your letters are the highlight of my day, she wrote her Aunt Rosa. The sense of abandonment by both father and even mother, who was often gone, must have affected her deeply. There was obvious anger and sometimes directed at her children. Willa Short loved her son-in-law, Roy. There was never a harsh word between them. She must have sensed in him a patient man whose love would bring healing to her daughter. Right from the beginning, Jim Weed demonstrated independence and bravado. He was intimidated by nothing. Throughout his life, this self-confidence would be his greatest strength and weakness. He was always busy. He was always had an eye for the ladies. And he always had an ear for music. His voice and his self-confidence would win him a spot on the first Youth for Christ teen team, five young people chosen from the whole country to tour Europe and the Middle East. The trips to Oklahoma were for Rosa May to touch base with her family and friends. She was raised in a matriarchy and Roy was very much the rugged man. Rosa May was the namesake of Willa's sister, Rosa Armstrong. She married Jess Colson, a World War I veteran. Since Rosa May had no siblings, her family became ours. Her Aunt Rosa was our Aunt Rosa, and her cousin Kathy became our cousin too. And they were all very committed to their faith, except for Everett. Uncle Everett Armstrong, Willa's brother, was a non-believer. A hotel manager, he smoked and drank excessively. Jimmy must have picked up on the concern of the family. There's this famous scene in the home movies where he fights and struggles in Everett's arms. But if anyone knew how to reach Everett's heart, it was his daughter Kathy. And after a stern lecture from Rosa May, Jimmy and Uncle Everett made up. Kathy, Rosa May's cousin, married a sailor, Richard Boggs, who became an Oklahoma milkman for Bordens and then spent a lifetime as an undertaker. Kathy became a lay leader in the Southern Baptist Convention. This famous family scene took place on the front porch of Aunt Rosa and Uncle Jess's house in Oklahoma City. They had no children. Their niece Kathy and us boys, the nephews, got all the attention. Jess was a quiet, dignified man with two powerful Dobermans in his backyard and an air conditioner, quite a novelty for the times. Roy was consumed with his work as pastor of Glad Tidings. A church calendar that year promoted the radio program. When August 1944 came around, the boys celebrated their birthday in Muncie, Indiana. Roy and Rosa Mae were planning to stay there forever.